Are you tired of printing EDFs that are usually underpowered, too heavy, or hard to print? Or hard to launch plastic airplanes that you have to throw towards the moon? EDF jets that you're lucky to get a handful of short flights out of before they're too cracked and broken to fly. If so, then one of these prop jets might be the project you've been looking for. Whether you're an experienced pilot or new to the hobby, these prop jets are incredibly fun and very easy to fly. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to build this SU-57 Park Flying Pusher. We're going to go over the entire build including electronics and motor installation. I'll even show you how to apply an easy paint scheme that will really make the model stand out. Unlike their EDF counterparts, these park jets have phenomenal slow flight characteristics and are even capable of sustained high alpha flight. Flight times are doubled also. Despite what you may think, these prop jets are actually faster than your typical EDF as well. Maybe even too fast. But the power's there if you need it. Landing speeds are slower as well, which means there's much less chance of it breaking. Unless of course you do something like this, or even like this, or possibly like this. <sighs> Thanks to the budget friendly steel wire construction, this airframe is still flight worthy. Have you ever seen a 3D printed model with over 131 successful flights and still counting? Before we punch a hole in the sky, I'd like to know how can I make the build and printing process even easier for you in the future. Let me know in the comments what I can do to help you get your airframe printed and flight worthy. Do you need print settings for a specific slicer or more details about the build? Whatever it is, let me know. I want you to actually build and fly these models, not just download and collect them like so many that I have. If you appreciate all the hard work that I put into this project, you can help support me by giving this video a thumbs up and leaving a comment down below. Now hit pause, go refill your coffee, and make sure your printer is still running because we're going to start assembling this 5th gen fighter. Let's start by making sure we have no clogs in any of the holes where the steel wire or carbon fiber will be inserted. Do this for all the fuselage and wing parts. Sometimes it helps to stand the parts up on the table when doing this. The use of steel wire or carbon fiber is completely optional, but it does help to align the parts, limit the amount of PLA used, and help hold the model together after much battle damage. These first three wires are meant to strengthen the battery compartment and help keep the nose from breaking off. They're capable of going about this far, but they only need to go from about here to here. Insert three yard flags into fuse one and guide the other end into fuse two. Apply glue to the front of fuse two and slide them together. Keep the steel wires forward as much as possible. It's okay to glue these in, but it's not required. Now would be a great time to cut these wires to length. Apply glue and slide fuse three into place, keeping the wires forward as much as possible. Align these parts the best you can, giving special attention to the outside edges where the wing will sit. You can use extra wires to help align these parts if you want, but it's not required. It also helps to do one side at a time. If you haven't already, cut the three wires to length and tack them in with glue to keep them from backing out. Now guide four more wires through all the fuselage parts. Seat them all the way forward into fuse number two before applying glue. Slide fuse 4 into place and get the outside edges as flush as you can for the wing. Now we need to assemble fuse number 5. Start by cutting all four of these wires to length, as indicated by the cut lines. Using a piece of steel wire as a guide, glue both inner stabs together. Align both parts as best as you can, with the Elevon hinge line being the most important. If you look closely, you'll see a recession where the stab will sit. You'll feel it lock into place when you push the parts together. Now do the exact same thing for the other side. 
making sure to get the hinge line as flush as possible. Don't forget to clean any excess glue out of the hinge line. Let's check our fit and then go ahead and glue Fuse 5 onto the rest of the fuselage. While maintaining forward pressure, be sure to keep the sides of the fuselage as flush as you can. It helps to do one side and then the other. Now let's assemble the hatch. This is one of the only areas in the entire model that actually has a little bit of cleanup, which you can easily do with your spatula. Locate the lock parts and drop the slide lock in as shown. Using a small amount of glue, drop the lock holder into place. Be sure to keep the slide lock moving while the CA hardens completely. Now install the rear hatch pin. You can use two pieces of wire to help join the hatch pieces if you want. Now assemble the elevons. Glue each half together, then clean any excess glue from the control horn. Do the same thing for the other side. It helps to clean the control horn out before the glue hardens completely. Attach the two tail pieces to the back of the elevons. Let's move on to the wing. We're going to assemble the left and right half before installing wing number four. Glue wing number one and two together. Then add wing number three. Be sure to clean any excess glue from the hinge line and repeat this process for the other side. Now that both halves are assembled, dry fit them onto the fuselage. Line the forward strake up and check the fit of wing number four. Check the other side as well, lining up the forward strake and making sure there's no gap in wing number four. When you're ready, go ahead and glue the wing on. It helps to tack down the front, tack down the rear, then go over the entire thing. Cut this wire to length and tuck it in, then glue wing number four into place. Repeat this for the other side, apply glue to the wing, and align it from front to back. Trim your wire and tuck it in, and finally glue wing 4 into place. Now let's hinge all the control surfaces. Last chance to clean any glue from the hinge line. Using printer filament, install each elevon. You can either do this one side at a time, or hinge both of them together using one piece. This construction method is extremely simple and works great. Do the same for the ailerons, but leave excess on both sides so we can remove them later. Now we're ready for our electronics. Wrapping the servos and masking tape will make them easier to remove later on. For a higher powered setup, use a 2836 1500 kV. For a lower powered setup, use a 2830 1300 kV. Both motors are capable of spinning a 7 inch prop on a 3 or 4 cell battery. There are two motor mounts with the files. One has recessed nuts and one doesn't. If you don't think you're ever going to change the motor out, use the one that's not recessed. Start by screwing the metal X to the back of the motor. Now mount that to the ASA motor mount. Install your ESC and check the polarity of the motor. Use a battery strap to secure the ESC. Insert the assembly into the airframe. The motor should sit approximately flush with this back wall. Orient the motor in an X configuration, not a plus sign. Apply glue and work it into place. Center it the best you can, then hit it with accelerator. Use Velcro to secure the battery and ESC. Insert two 9 gram servos into the servo pockets. Center the servos and secure the receiver to the right side of the airframe. Install music wire from the inside of the servo to the outside of the elevon. It helps to remove the control horn. Do the same thing to the other side from the inside out. Using pre-trim, equalize and center both elevons. 
Then add 7 millimeters of reflex measured from the rearmost point. Now going from the outside of the servo to the inside of the aileron, bend and cut another piece of music wire. First install the music wire into the aileron. Remove the hinge from the aileron. Insert the other end into the control arm of the servo. Then rehinge the aileron. Repeat the same procedure for the other side. Going from the outside of the servo to the inside of the aileron. Remove the hinge from the aileron and install the music wire. And finally, rehinge the aileron and trim off any excess. Here's what it'll look like when you're done. Using the third hole for ailerons and the fourth hole for ailerons. It's now safe to glue the servos in using a small amount of hot glue. Don't forget to install the screws. The elevator will travel 41 millimeters each direction, or 82 millimeters total. Same with the ailerons. There will be 82 millimeters of total travel measured from the rearmost point. Let's head over to the paint booth. Find a paint scheme that's easy to apply, preferably one that utilizes the print color. I prefer to hand brush printed models because I can do it much faster than airbrushing or spray can, and the finished product looks just as nice. Try to use a paint scheme that will make the model easier to see in the sky, and one that will help differentiate the top from the bottom. This part all comes down to personal preference, and what works best for you. If you're new to 3D printing airplanes or flying, keep this part as simple as possible. The same can be said for the assembly. Try not to get carried away. You'll have better results that way. At the end of the day, it's a plastic model that you're going to break eventually. That's if the sun don't melt it first, or you don't drop it on the way to the field. Unfortunately, 3D printed airplanes don't last nearly as long as you'd like them to. Once you're happy with your paint scheme, go ahead and install the vertical fins. You can use a short piece of wire to help align the fins. Go ahead and install your prop. If your motor is spinning in the wrong direction, make sure your prop is extra tight. And that officially completes our build. Let's take it out to the field and have some fun. These prop jets are incredibly fun and very easy to build and fly. Designed to minimize travel moves and make construction as easy as possible, making your printer do all the work for you. Whether you're a beginner pilot or a seasoned veteran, these park flyers will definitely sharpen your skills. They can be kept in a very tight area and flown almost anywhere. If you decide to build one of these for yourself, I recommend keeping the build as light as you can. These models have been tested with different sized power plants and by using different infill percentages. Following the print and build recommendations will ensure your park jet will fly just like the one you see here. As with any RC airplane, don't forget to balance it before heading out to the field. If you're looking to high alpha with one of these models, it definitely helps to have the optional rudder installed. It's almost a requirement. Check out my F-22 build video for the installation of the optional vectored rudder. It also helps to print the airframe as light as possible, adhering to the printed weights or using the G-codes that come with the model files, and definitely helps to use the recommended motor and prop. It makes a huge difference. Using extra walls, stronger PLA, or a higher infill percentage doesn't always mean more strength. Personally, I feel it makes the model more costly with a better chance of breaking during landing. If you're still struggling to print and build your own, let me know in the comments what I can do in future videos to help you have a successful first flight. If you enjoyed watching me build and fly this model, please take a second to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for future build, flight, and test videos. As always, thanks for watching and for your interest in my models. Happy printing, and I'll talk to you next time.